So we have some breaking news. Tropicana Field has officially been labeled as unplayable for the start of 2025 due to the fact that the roof got completely ripped off and they don't have a water drainage system. So we'll talk about that later in the video because there's a lot to break down. Before we do that, let's just talk about the game two of the ALCS between the Guardians and the Yankees. And I won't even lie to you guys. I looked away and wasn't even paying attention to the end of this play because I'm thinking to myself, surely Gold Glove nominated shortstop Brian Rocchio will catch this baseball. It reminded me of Luis Castillo dropping A-Rod's final out back in the day. The wind was making the ball dance for everyone, so it wasn't like Rokio was the only one who struggled, but everyone else caught the baseball. Alex Verdugo, he had an RBI double to score. Volpe in the second, and it just missed hitting an umpire. Tanner Bybee, the ace of the Guardians, he's still out there fighting. He got Glaber to pop up for the first out, but then Steven Vogt intentionally walked Juan Soto to load the bases for the 2022 and probably 2024 AL MVP Aaron Judge. I was on the edge of my seat, and then they yanked Tanner Bybee, their ace, and Tanner's laughing to himself. He's thinking to himself, I mean, I'm the ace. I'm that guy. You want to pull me? Fine, do it. I'm sure that doesn't feel great and you want to battle, but allowing five hits in an inning and a third is not that great. Kate Smith, he is the real-life Terminator. Judge, he did get an RBI. It was a sack fly, so an RBI out. And then Kate Smith struck out Austin Wells. Kate is like the right-handed Andrew Miller right now, knock on wood. And Austin Wells, he's currently four for his last 70 or something crazy like that. It's 3 nothing for Garrett Cole. He's in some big-time trouble in the fourth. There's a base loaded situation one out versus pinch hitter David Fry David swung at the first pitch after seeing Cole throw ball after ball after ball take a pitch my guy Rokio had a great at bat but it ended with a painted curveball on the border Cole he got into some more trouble in the fifth there's a sack fly to Josh Naylor, so there's a run on the board for Cleveland. He walked the bases loaded. So Aaron Boone, he had to go with his own Terminator, Clay Holmes. Garrett, he's no longer in line for the W because you have to go at least five innings. Will Brennan, that is an RBI fielder's choice. Andres Jimenez, he was given the unintentional, intentional walk. They walked him on purpose to get to the worst hitter in the history of baseball. Austin Hedges strikes out with the bases loaded. He's batting 077 with a 249 OPS in his playoff career. He is the worst hitter of all time in my opinion jazz he finally did something productive and then uh i kind of feel bad at this point he immediately ruins it by getting picked off anthony rizzo he is pulling a 2016 kyle schwarber do you guys remember when schwarber was out for the playoffs then all of a sudden was ready for the 2016 world series rizzo jolted a ball to right field brennan i'm talking about will brennan by the way has been absolutely useless in the playoffs he bobbed the ball so volpe scores now the yankees did run into a second out on the bases and if you know anything about yankees fans they hate base running mistakes Stakes, almost more than they hate losing it's all good though because Aaron Judge he finally got a ball to go his first home run of the playoffs this year I knew that it was going to happen because Austin Hedges he was setting up and I said audibly out loud when I was watching live it has to happen who knows maybe that unlocks Aaron Judge and maybe this unlocks J Ram while also showing that Luke Weaver is in fact human both Jose and Judge have been pretty pathetic for their standards in the playoffs so a home run off of Weaver it's kind of like that scene from Rocky where he makes the rush guy bleed like he's human he can bleed Luke Weaver he can give up runs regardless Luke does get the final three out so the Yankees are up two nothing heading to Cleveland for the next three games do you think that the Yankees are going to sweep do you think that the Guardians are going to snap out of it and actually play some decent baseball what do you think happens the rest of the way I'm curious so let's talk about it the Ray Stadium is not playable heading into 2025 because the roof got completely ripped off by the recent hurricane and by the way if you're in the surrounding areas I'm praying for you guys but the thing about having a roof is that they didn't invest in a water drainage system because why would you you have a roof the, the rain's not going to get in but because they don't have a water drainage system and it's in florida any rain is just going to pile up and obviously you can't play baseball in those conditions they won't have a new stadium so they did agree that a stadium is going to get built but it won't be ready until 2028 so does that mean the rays are going to have to share a stadium with the miami marlins do you think that they're going to go to dunedin so if you don't remember from 2020 to 2021 i believe or something like that the blue jays because of the travel restrictions they had to play in Dunedin, where Vladimir Guerrero Jr. absolutely wrecked shop. He loved hitting there. So I guess my question is, where do the Rays go from here? It's going to cost anywhere from 75 to 100 plus million dollars to fix the roof. Do they even try to fix the roof because they already have to build a new stadium? So they'd be fixing their current stadium, spending 100 plus million dollars while also trying to build a new stadium that's going to be ready in the next three years. So they just scrap Tropicana Field altogether and play at an alternative site, almost like what the A's are doing before they go to Las Vegas. They're going to be playing in Sacramento. It's a really sad situation, and I can't believe it actually happened because that roof, I mean, it's completely... It's basically gone, and people are now selling the scraps on eBay, trying to make a quick buck off of it. 
it's really sad all the way around. So before we guess the batter and pitcher, I'm going to do today in MLB history because we actually have some fun stories. So four years ago today, it feels like just yesterday, Will Smith homered off of Will Smith in the playoffs. That's the first time in postseason history, which spans back 100 plus years, that a batter and pitcher faced off with the exact same name. 16 years ago in 2008, the Red Sox, they rallied down seven runs, to come back and win game number five of the ALCS, one of the more improbable comebacks in postseason history. 21 years ago today, the Red Sox rival Aaron Boone, he became a Yankee legend with a walk-off home run, a no-doubter, by the way, to send his team to the World Series. And 114 years ago today, this is absolutely crazy. Ty Cobb. You guys know Ty Cobb is famous and one of the more recognizable names in baseball. I think they called him the Flying Dutchman, or was that Hannes Wagner? What was Ty with The Splendid Splinter? None of those were right. He was known as the Georgia Peach. Well, regardless, that season in 1910, again, 114 years ago today, Ty Cobb hit 382 and was named the AL batting champion, even though he didn't even lead the league in batting average. Cleveland hitter Nap Lajway, he was on the Cleveland Naps. Yes, they named the team after a player on their own squad, Nap Lajway. He hit 383, so he led the league in batting average, but he wasn't named the champion because the AL president said that the St. Louis Cardinals helped Nap basically cheat. The president said that the St. Louis shortstop played deeper than normal. So on the final day of the season, the Cardinals, because they were playing deeper, allowed Knapp to have six bunt base hits out of eight hits total on the day and a season ending double header. So because of those eight base hits, six of them bunt base hits and the Cardinals shortstop playing further back than normal, the president ignored the fact that Knapp did beat Ty Cobb Knapp had a 383 batting average. Ty Cobb had a 382 batting average. He still said that Cobb was the batting champion. Kind of a crazy story. So before we do today's immaculate grid, you guys know we guessed the batter and the pitcher to end every single postseason recap. This, this is pretty easy, right? This is Mark Vientos. This looks exactly like Mark Vientos if it's not him. Oh, wait, what? So it's someone on the Mets. It's not a third baseman. Uh, That's not... Okay, I got to think about... Mets right-handed hitters. That's not Francisco Alvarez from the or that's yeah, that's not Francisco Alvarez. That's not Francisco Lindor from the right side. That's not JD Martinez. That's not Mark Vientos. Who in the world is that Jose? It's not Jose Iglesias. Wait, is it Jose Iglesias? I'm gonna be really upset if it's not Jose Iglesias because who else could this be? So it's a number within, I think when it's yellow for the jersey, it's within two. I don't know. Are they expecting me to know Luis Torrens? I don't even think Luis Torrens is on this thing. Luis, okay, he is. Is this Luis Torrens? Oh. All right, guys. Whoever makes this game, you got to understand that Luis Torrens, he don't play a lot, okay? If you actually get this on the first try, you're either a Mets fan or you're just an actual savant because there's no way anyone gets that. Okay. Uh, This looks like... Is that Ryan Pepio? I think this might be... No, it's not Ryan Pepio because you would see Ryan Pepio's hair. Is this... Uh, I. It looks like Dean Kremer. Maybe this is Dean Kremer, but I don't want to... I'm just going to... I'm going to guess Dean Kremer at first just to see if I can get a division or something like that. So, okay, it is Dean Kremer. He went to UNLV, so maybe I'm a little bit biased. That's the college that I went to. So, I have some Dean Kremer knowledge in the back of my baseball you know, whatever it is. Just move on. I'm still blown away that they thought most of us would know who Luis Torrens is. All right, let's do the Immaculate Grid. I'm going to do a Speed Grid. Let's see if I can get this done. Three, two, one. J.D. Martinez for the Mets and the Dodgers. Uh, Nationals and Dodgers. Nationals and Dodgers. Hudson. Daniel Hudson. I think you want to chip with him. Yeah. Uh, 100 RBI season. Did Adrian Gonzalez. I'm going to go Agon. Adrian Gonzalez for sure. Uh, Mets and Cubs. Mets and Cubs. Mets and Cubs. I don't know. I'm going to have to move. Oh, wait. Uh, Quintana. Quintana. Huh, huh. Come on. Come on. Jose Quintana. Come on. Uh, Nationals and Cubs. Nationals and Cubs. Nationals and Cubs. I have no idea right now. 100 RBI season. I'm going to go Lee. Derek. Derek Lee. I know that he had 100 RBIs. Uh, Mets and uh, Lindor. I can't believe that they're trolling me like that. Uh, Mets. Uh, Rosario. Eddie Rosario. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Eddie Rosario. Eddie Rosario. Cleveland 100 RBI season. Uh... Ramirez, I know that he had it. Uh, oh, I'll just go Manny. And then who's a national in the cup? National cup, national cup. Uh, uh, Gomes, Gomes, please. Wasn't he a national? He was. Let's go. I pulled that out of my you know what. Well, that does it for today's postseason recap. I know that these 
recaps can get a little bit short towards the end of the year, so I'm trying to include some fun facts and some games and stuff like that, but I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, send to a friend if you think that they would enjoy these videos, and I'll catch you in the next one. Stay safe.